I always end up hoarding half-used seed packets from year to year. I hope to use them later, but never get to them. This year, I decided to do something about that. So this year, I had a lot of seed, old seed from previous years laying around and I want to use everything so I start sowing things and I had basil seeds so I just threw it all into a plate to germinate to see if actually I would get anything and I got everything <laughs> so everything sprouted and I actually missed the right point where I usually um, transplant them into the cups so they're a little bit too big what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cram them in and see what happens I'm using my tried and true plastic cup setup to grow these. While I want to eliminate my plastic consumption as much as possible, I've been reusing these cups for several years now and have not bought new ones since. This cup size works well as it allows enough space for the roots of the young seedlings to develop and provide sustenance to the plants. I hope to find new ways of growing without using plastic that happens to work just as well. I used a good organic potting mix to fill the cups and spread little clumps of sprouted basil seeds covering them with soil. I had sown these thickly because frankly I thought that the seed was old and would mostly just rot. Since almost all of the seedlings germinated successfully I ended up having a tangle of seeds that is not conducive to this method of propagation. While you can say that sowing directly in soil is the best way of starting seeds, I would say it is the least complicated, but maybe not the best in all situations. In this case, I wasn't sure of the viability of the seed, so knowing that they sprouted before devoting potting soil and tray space to them was a good idea. The plate germination method is great for beginners because it allows the person to be more in control of the process and see things happening faster. The constant moist and warm environment in the plate hastens germination. And while you may think I just like to complicate things unnecessarily, take this into account. Several large-scale seedling raising operations use pre-sprouting under controlled environment to save seed and ensure faster and more reliable germination. Of course, they also use mechanization, which makes this viable in larger scales. But the point remains, pre-sprouting can be very useful. However, you must be super gentle with the emerging roots. That is why here I cut a few clumps of seeds with the paper, instead of picking one by one. I also had too many seeds growing, so I was not worried about losing some. Basil being a warmth-loving plant benefits from being started indoors for an earlier harvest. And that's it. Now they're ready to grow. I just have to wait for them to grow. I'll put them under fluorescent lights inside and wait for summer harvest. I'll have to send them. I don't like that part. Thinning will be inevitable in this case, but sometimes you just have to do it. Coming up in the next block, I will show you what I did with all the remaining seed I had pre-sprouted. Would my experiment with controlling its environment work? You are about to find out right after this commercial. Suburban Homestead is brought to you by viewers like you. Thank you! I would like to especially thank those who have been watching the advertisements during these videos. If you would like to support more quality content in the channel, you can choose to become a patron through the channel's Patreon or buy art from my Etsy shop. I still had a plate three quarters of the way full of sprouted basil seeds that had nowhere to go. It was still too cold to plant them outside directly, so I started to have ideas. Now that the weather has stabilized a bit and it seems we have passed the chance of having hard frosts, I'm going to uncover this, let the kale grow and move this cold frame to another place so I can start some warmer season vegetables, like actually I'm going to try out basil and see what happens. Seeing that I had the extra pre-sprouted seeds that would go to waste, I decided to experiment using one of my cold frames 
to direct seed outside under the protection of glass. I was not sure if this would work at all. The sprouted seedlings would be very susceptible to shock at such a tender age. Basil loves warmer temperatures, stunting its growth even around 50 degrees Fahrenheit. But I had to try. Maybe this would jumpstart the season by a few weeks. I had a tray full of basil starts growing indoors as insurance, so I was bound to at least get some basil established, even if I lost all the basil from this cold frame experiment. The kale and arugula I had planted in the cold frame clearly wanted more space to expand, so removing the cold frame was the right decision. Since these crops were cold tolerant, an eventual light frost would not damage them. They had gotten accustomed to the balmy interior climate under glass, and I was reticent they would show stress, yet nonetheless I continued. I cleared a spot where I intended to lay the cold frame, removing all the extra insulating decaying plant matter used as mulch through the winter. I have been practicing in recent years chop and drop to contain the fertility of the soil in the same spot. This can be described as on-the-spot composting. I feel that this style of fertilizing and soil amending is ideal since you don't have to deal with turning and managing compost piles or lugging materials back and forth to compost while protecting the soil with mulch. This way, the earth is always covered up, protecting it from the deleterious effects of compaction and nutrient and soil life loss when left exposed. Of course, in order to direct sow, it is necessary to uncover the soil. I intended to add mulch back as the seed sprouted and grew. This wooden frame was particularly heavy and cumbersome. Because of its hefty construction, it was able to keep my kale and arugula seeds growing throughout winter, protecting them from heavy frosts and a winter with unusual bouts of cold weather. I scratched the surface of the soil using a tool and made a shallow trench to drop in the sprouted basil seeds. I then carefully picked up the seeds, spacing them throughout the shallow trench, trying to be careful not to damage the roots too much. By planting densely, I was hoping to have at least some seed survive and flourish into early basil. Since basil loves a warmer climate closer to 80 degrees, it is usually advisable to only plant them outdoors once the weather has completely stabilized and you expect nighttime low temperatures to be above 60 degrees. For where I live, a good rule of thumb is to only plant them after Labor Day. By the end of May, it is usually warm enough. When planted in cold weather, they will stunt growth and start to lose leaves. When planted in warm weather with enough moisture, they will zoom up and grow rapidly, putting out lots of leaves. Of course, when late summer arrives with dog days over 90 degrees, they will tend to bolt, shooting up flower stalks and setting seed. You want to keep the flower stalks pinched by then to encourage foliar growth. By planting them inside the cold frame, I knew that temperatures would reach 10 to 20 degrees higher during the day, forcing a mini summer during early spring. I was still skeptical if nighttime temperatures would dip too low for its liking. Also, the risk of dehydration inside of the cold frame was high, especially in a sunny spring day. It could cause temperatures to soar too quickly, effectively frying the young seedlings. Having put some thin layer of mulch back over the planted seedlings to protect them from the sun and preserve moisture, I knew I had to protect the growing baby kale from the potential of groundhog damage. Since they were accustomed to growing inside of a rectangular box, putting a chicken wire cage over them was very simple. They were looking better than the kale I transplanted the previous week. I could only hope they would keep growing nice and green. A light drizzle of ice under an overcast sky testified to the fact that winter still didn't want to fully allow spring to take charge. But the basil was well protected under glass. I hoped the experiment would work.